Let's dig deeper now with our ABC News senior Pentagon reporter, Louis Martinez, an ABC News national security and defense analyst and former deputy assistant secretary of defense for the Middle East, Mick Mulroy. Mick, quite a title there, sir. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, Louis, the Taliban is celebrating th today, although many of the residents of the country are not. Since pulling U.S. troops, people there are still in crisis. Thousands are waiting to hear about pending visas to leave the country. What role is the U.S. playing, if any, in helping people in the country? Kenneth, what is going on in Afghanistan right now is a humanitarian crisis. You're talking about a famine that has taken place there uh, inside of Afghanistan as since the United States pulled out. You, the, the restrictions, the sanctions that continue against the Taliban and internationally since they took over remain in place. And so the United States uh, has been providing humanitarian relief uh, to the people of Afghanistan, not to the government, but to the people of Afghanistan. There's a distinction there. So what they're trying to do is provide, uh, so far since last August, the United States has provided more than $750 million uh, worth of assistance uh, for humanitarian purposes to try to alleviate uh, the suffering that you heard Ian Panel talk about in his uh, stand up there. The other situation that's going on is the plight of those tens of thousands, I think the estimate is close to 77,000 uh, Afghans who worked with the United States as interpreters or in some other capacity uh, during the U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. They, these are the individuals who applied for those special immigrant visas that we heard about last year. Uh, it was a cumbersome process, and in the end, it was a very small fraction of those individuals who actually made it out. 120,000 people were flown out by the United States in, uh, almost a year ago uh, after the fall of Kabul. But the number of those individuals who had actually been a part of that special immigrant visa program was just infinitesimally small uh, a portion of that. So the United States recently has been trying to streamline that process. It's still in place so that the United States can help get these individuals out. Yeah, and we do know that uh, make billions worth of military equipment were left in Afghanistan. What threat does this pose now that the Taliban has control of Afghanistan? Well, it poses a, a significant threat, Kenneth. Uh, as you mentioned, that is a lot of military hardware. Essentially, uh, the Afghanistan might be exactly where it was uh, before 2001 when we went in with the Taliban in charge, uh, giving a safe haven to al-Qaeda. But now they're very much equipped uh, with U.S. weapon systems and vehicles, and that's a big problem. Right now, it doesn't look like, according to the intelligence community, that the al-Qaeda uh, elements have reconstituted themselves. But there's essentially nothing that would prevent them from reconstituting themselves and becoming an external threat to the United States and our partners. And Louis, Republicans have released a 123-page report criticizing the pullout of U.S. troops. What's in that report and how is the White House responding? Well, it's a, it's a tale of two cities when you look at it. The Republicans on the House Foreign Affairs Committee essentially say that the withdrawal of United States troops did not have to happen. They said, number one, that it was botched, um, that President Biden went in there with his mind made up, that it should not have been a con it should have been a conditions-based withdrawal under the Doha agreement made by the Trump administration with the Taliban. Um, they call it a colossal failure in terms of um, th that it led to ultimately to the deaths of those 13 Americans um, at the airport. So you, what you're hearing from from the White House is that it's partisan politics, um, and they've pushed him back saying that, as Mick just said, that the security threat from Al Qaeda is minimal. And we know, Mick, that the National Security Council is saying that Al Qaeda has not, quote, reconstituted its presence in Afghanistan since the U.S. departure. And an Al Qaeda leader who was recently killed was the only key Al Qaeda figure who attempted to reestablish their presence in the country. So what does this mean when it comes to harboring terrorists? And is there still a real threat here? So, Kenneth, I think it means that senior Al Qaeda leaders believe that Afghanistan is a safe haven for them. Perhaps they, they might change their mind now after that exceptional uh, counterterrorism operation uh, carried out by the CIA. Uh, but I don't know that we can count on that in the future. We had really exquisite intelligence. We also had a target that liked to go out in the balcony every day. So uh, I, I, I totally agree with the IC, but we'll have to see whether they actually do uh, reconstitute themselves. All right, we will see. We're going to leave it right there, Louis, Mick. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.